right, guys. So we're going to try something a little bit different here. I got Dose of Dion, who covers the Detroit Lions for Fan to Fan Network. And just so we're all clear, I got the YouTube thing, which if you're watching this is kind of self-explanatory, but I'm also going to use the audio for the podcast. So if you're listening to this podcast, you can check this out on YouTube. It is Pack Danny NFL. Um, also, really got to check out Dose of Dion. Um, I started watching him just because he's a part of Fan to Fan Network. And that's my network, and I wanted to kind of get involved and support guys. But I'll tell you right now, man, this guy definitely knows his stuff. And if you want to check out some Lions content and know what's going on over there, I would definitely encourage you to do that. But, Dose, thanks a lot for being here, man. I really appreciate that. Yes, sir. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate the nice intro. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> for sure, <laughs> man. So, here, man. So, so the first thing, I just want to start off, just kind of break the ice a little bit. And just know I'm asking you this out of respect for Lions fans because I really respect what you guys go through and that you hang in there. But I, I just – I got to know because Packer fans, I'm starting to get real frustrated with because unless you go undefeated and win the Super Bowl, they're not happy. So talk – walk me through this a little bit. So the, the season starts, you go through the draft, you go through free agency. Is it kind of like, you know, we're going to win the Super Bowl or is it kind of like, you know, your dad and your kids are ugly and you come home from work and, you know, you love your kids, but I don't want to walk through that door, man. It's going to be bad. What is it like? Oh, man, I, th I think there's a mix there. I don't know um, how many people like actually think we're going to go to the Super Bowl. I mean, I know there's an the optimism that maybe something that this is our year. You know, we say that a lot, but uh, I don't know if anybody actually believes that we're going to make the Super Bowl. It's, yeah. it's usually playoff hopes. That's where we start. And, and what you said, I thought that was perfect because uh, about the whole Packers fan base, I was actually reading a Packers article today and I just saw that whole argument in the comment section, like we're nine and three, you know, we shouldn't be upset. And there's other people just mad. I was like, oh, wow. So I, I think you uh, hit it right on the head with that. Yeah, it's crazy. So, all right. So, so now let's, let's go to mid season a little bit. Cause usually you guys are kind of here where it's not great, but technically there's still hope usually around now, not specifically this season, but usually around now, is it more or less, Hey, look, if, if we can really get this thing going, we can get in the playoffs, we have a chance, or is it kind of like, look, this year sucks better luck next year. Okay. Yeah. So I think, I think it was kind of the, this year it stinks kind of deal where everybody was kind of looking to hope, looking forward to the next year's draft until Patricia was fired. Yeah. And once he did that, I mean, the fan base, most of them I know flipped and they were all of a sudden excited. And then to win our first game, divisional opponent we haven't beat a divisional opponent in a while now so to do that it kind of got the steam rolling and you know hey the nfc allowing seven teams in we're, we're still in the hunt so i know me personally i'm hoping we get to the playoffs because i just want to i just want to see us get in you know you see washington beat pittsburgh you need to know anything's possible plus it's hard it's hard to like not root for your team to, to make the playoffs and just win as much as possible because i mean we're not usually that good anyway so i'm always rooting for winning well that was kind of kind of leads into the next thing because like this year specifically you know, technically the Lions are last in the division, but it's still pretty much wide open. You guys have got the same record as the Bears, and the Bears are just imploding right now. The Vikings are only one game up, but they got Tampa Bay this week. If you can pull it off against the Packers, 100%, you're you're not just in the hunt. You're you're right there for playoff hopes. It, yeah, it's, it's a tall task. You know, it's a very tall task. But, yeah, I mean, if we can do it, you know, that's how the schedule plays out. We could be tied for the last wild card spot knowing we played Minnesota the last week of the season. So, Look, we got. I've, I've seen we have the toughest strengths of schedule this way out. So it's it's kind of cool though because it, it gives uh, Daryl Bevel an opportunity to see if he can be the head coach. So there's there's a couple good things rolling with it here. So let's let's kind of look at this matchup, um, and I want to start with the injuries because that's it's not great right now for the Detroit Lions and the injuries, especially you know you got to not just the Packers. There's a pretty tough road the next couple weeks, but let's start one by one, and I want to look at at uh, Kenny Galladay. Um, in your own words, I don't want to lead you here. In your own, how big of an impact is that guy in terms of your ability to win or lose football games? I uh, I would say before last week, Galladay was the second most impactful player besides Stafford. Um, you know, we, we didn't really prove until last week we could be that competitive without him. We had like the one win over Washington, but aside from that, we had games. Our offense just didn't look productive at all. It, it this looked like you kind of had to pay Galladay. That's kind of where we're sitting. And then last week, you know, the offense started to click a little bit. How much was that? Patricia's no longer there. I don't know. Uh, but up until last week, Galladay was such a huge part of his team, and, and he still is. But Marvin Jones has started to pick it up recently, so that, that's good. All right, moving down the list, Tyrell Crosby. Um, what does what the offensive line kind of look like? I mean, who's going to be there, and what is your optimism level with, with him sidelined? I'm actually kind of optimistic. I'm okay with, you know, with what we got behind him. You know, we okay. had Matt Nelson step in last week, and, you know, it's – 
kind of like our third backup at this point, but he did fine against Khalil Mack. And I think this offensive line has some good depth. I think it's built pretty well. The left side is strong. You know, we moved Jonah over there last week and you got Frank and Decker and that, that side's strong. The right side's, you know, a little bit questionable. That kind of moves in and out, but they've done, they've done a pretty good job this year and they've shown they've had good depth. And then finally, Okuda, kind of, probably kind of similar, because on one hand, it's like, dude, that's our number one guy or whatever. But at the same time, he hasn't been all that great to begin with. So w- what do you feel now that you know that he's not going to be playing? Right, right. Um, yeah, Jeffrey Okuda, he, he missed last week as well. It, it just stinks because we also have true fun out in IR. So right. we, we missed both of those. We're kind of we're kind of rolling with the backs. It honestly takes us back to early this season. I think week one, we had the same kind of thing going on. We had two corners go down. Okuda didn't play. I want to see Okuda out there. I think this is, you know, how you get better. Right. I think that's, you know, how that starts. But uh, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of how we've been rocking with it through the season. So, uh, you know, I think we'll be maybe okay. Uh, it can't be much worse. I mean, our past defense has been terrible either way. <laughs> so, so injuries are rough, but optimism is pretty high. What is it? So that so best case scenario, right? Everything's going great. Bevel's just killing it. The offense is tearing it up right now. What's it going to take? What What is it going to be that you want to see from the Detroit Lions to say this is how we beat the Packers in this game? Okay, so like I know defensively we're going to get up a lot of points. You know we've given up a lot of points to teams that don't score that much. I just want to see a defense be extremely aggressive. Yep. I want to see them do whatever they possibly can, blitzing whatever, just to try to get Aaron Rodgers a little bit uncomfortable. Because I know if we try to just, you know, keep everything in front of us. We're just going to get picked apart. I mean, that's kind of what, how, how it goes. And I know our coverage isn't that good anyway, so you might as well just, okay, let's just see if we can get after him, maybe force a turnover and give us an extra possession. And then, and then I think, you know, your best shot is going to be offensively, you got to score over 30. No question. I think you have to score over 30 in this game and you got to play very clean. No turnovers, limit the penalties. A lot of things got to go right. Yeah. And I, you know, it, when you watch that Steelers Washington game, you know, anything could happen. And really it doesn't even have to be that crazy. I mean, the, the Detroit lions having a good day and the Packers having a bad day, that's really all it takes. And the lions are going to walk away with this one. Not, not a guarantee, <laughs> but it could happen. All right. So, so let's, let's just move forward a little bit because I'm, I'm curious and, and I got my NFL draft stuff that I got to do. I'm going to do another mock, but then one of the seven rounds I'm doing is the Lions. So I'm going to need your help a little bit with this one. So first of all, before we even get there, you lost your head coach and you lost your GM. Do you have any, do you have like a wish list you're starting to build up on who you want coming in here? Ooh. Okay. So I've been, I've been working through some, I got a long way to go. Okay. I've only looked at like really four general managers. I had Dodds is the top of my list right now. If he wants to become a GM, yeah, he's, he's up there right now. Um, and then when it comes to head coaching, I, I love all the coordinator names. Like I, I know, like, you know, they could turn into good coaches. No question. I right. just, I personally believe the Lions need someone that's done it before just somewhere done it before. Uh, if, like our historically, you look at uh, our winning and, you know, things like that. The best coaches we have are guys that have done it before, even if they weren't super successful elsewhere, just done it before. Cause I think the lions need someone to just step in, kind of say, I've done this before, not really take a, take a lot of time to try to figure out what's going on. And, you know, you go into Detroit, there's, there's, you know, you get about three to four years or you're going to be fired. And we've done that so many times that I think you need a guy that can step in day one. He could take control of the team, tell him this is how he does things. And then maybe if they have a resume to back it up, it can really help. So if you were the GM of the team, and I'm not talking specific draft prospects or anything like that, but just kind of big picture, one of the things that I'm not really sure about, and I don't even know where Lions fans are on this, because I do think Matt Stafford has been somewhat underrated as a quarterback, but at the same time, he's getting older, his contract's coming up. If you've got an opportunity, let's start there, to grab a, a good quarterback prospect, you think it's about time to maybe, even if he doesn't start year one, maybe just you know give him one year to sit behind Stafford and then move on. I would have no problem taking a quarterback. I, I mean, I, I think top three rounds is fine. I think yeah. you can take him anywhere in there. I'd love to put him behind him, knowing Stafford's got a couple years left. It, it really, to me, it just comes down to what Stafford wants at this point, because I think with the whole money situation, he'll be here next year. But I'd love to put someone behind him and just just get it ready. Um, look, this team isn't really that great overall, so it's it's kind of a mess anyways. But I think, you know, it, it's going to be important to prepare for the future because I don't know what Stafford's going to want to do. You know, he's could be going through another rebuild. I don't know if he's going to want to do that. So I, yeah. I'm definitely okay with taking a top quarterback. Yeah, and then I, I guess it's, like you said, it's, it's really hard to say. It's hard to even pick like a thing where you want to go because you say, well, we should focus on the defense. What do you want to do there? But at the same, you got a bunch of wide receivers that are leaving. Not sure what's going on with these running backs and the offensive line. So like, just, just if I just give you a platform and I'm like, here are a couple key things. Like if we're going to turn this around quick, like next year we're contenders. What, where do you want to focus? Ooh, well, I think I, <laughs> this is a long, figure it wow. out. Cause I don't know what to do with your, with yeah, that, is, mock. that is tough. You know, <laughs> I, 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 okay. 
but if I had like a, a wish way to do it, honestly, yeah. it'd be keeping Daryl Bevel. It'd be giving him next year uh, because that way he has some experience leading next year. There's everybody's kind of buying into what's going on there, maybe a little bit. Uh, so I, I have Daryl Bevel rolling next year as my head coach. And then I think, you know, uh, you could consider bringing back Galladay. I would definitely consider paying him, giving him the money. You know, I don't think offense needs tons of work. It's just kind of the receiver group. It's kind of who's going to stay and who's not. You got Marvin, you got Danny Amendola, you got Kenny Galladay. So are you going to pay those guys? You're going to go in the draft, take a top receiver. But aside from receiver group, I think they're okay there. It's the defense, man. I, I, I don't know. I mean, there's some part of me tells me there's young, you know, they're, they're, they're growing and there's just a lot of injuries, but then at the same time, it's like, man, I just, I don't know if they have that high of a ceiling right now. I just think there's, you know, we got a lot of two-year deals. So you're going to have a lot of guys that can come back next year if you want to compete, but I don't know. I mean, it's tough because I, I really think, uh, you know, we're going to learn a lot these last four games with where this defense is at without Patricia here, depending if Unlin changes things up. But, I mean, I don't know who our coordinator is going to be next right. year for defense. <laughs> I don't even know who our head coach is going to be. So, it's tough. Uh, but I don't think the offense is too far away. I just think, you know, you got to kind of let Stafford cook, man. Well, my preparing obviously sucks at doing this because I'm already out of questions. But do me a big favor <laughs> <laughs> and tell everybody where they can get some uh, some more Dose content. Hey, uh, yeah, you can, you can find me on YouTube, Dose of at 2.0. Uh, I'm also on Instagram and on Twitter. Hey, man, it's all good. It, it's all good. Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I would have a question for you, though. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, what do you What do you think is your biggest weakness as a team? What do you think the Packers' biggest weakness is? It sounds dumb, but it's it's sort of their their mentality. You know, sometimes they just kind of come out flat. Like, they're just not ready. They just don't care. The coach even called them out for their energy, you know, on some mm -hmm. of these games. And I think the biggest thing, if you're the Lions, is if you get in their head, you know, like you said, be aggressive come out early because they're expect look they're going to walk out like this is no big deal as the lions we're going to march down the field we're going to score points we're going to take the ball blah, blah, blah. that's just in their head they come out and you force them to go three and out or just keep them to no points and then come back and score they just i don't know what it is man they get up inside their head they start pouting they start whatever keep your foot on their throat and don't stop and it it the the real it's making me sick even saying this out loud but <laughs> the real bad thing is they don't they don't just lose when they lose they just completely implode and, and just embarrass themselves. Like with Tampa, they couldn't mm -hmm. even be competitive. Yeah. They lose like 400 to 10 or whatever it was. I don't remember. That's what my, in my, <laughs> right, it was. right, right. So it's just, that's really what it is, is you got to hit them hard and you got to hit them early. And if you don't do that, the other fatal flaws in the fourth quarter, they coast. So if you're down a lot, they're going to take their foot all the way off the gas in the fourth quarter. Give it everything you got. Give it one last shot. The off offense is going to start running the ball because they want to start killing the clock because they just, forget how quickly teams can score and our defensive coordinator is going to play nothing but prevent and our guys are going to fall asleep. So you got two chances, get them early, get them sleeping. And if that doesn't work, hit them real hard in the fourth quarter and give it your best shot. Yeah. I like that. I mean, Hey, last time we played you guys, I remember we got up early, really fast. That was been kind of the story of our year, but yeah, we got up really, really fast. But with that, we made some really big mistakes. We let you guys just take over. Yeah. But hey, we got a, hey, we got a guy that likes comeback. So maybe we'll do, <laughs> maybe we'll come back in the end there. Now, you got to give me a prediction before we get out. Oh, uh, no, you go first. This is my <laughs> thing. You don't tell okay. me. I tell oh, you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, man, I didn't even come up with one. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> man, I, I don't know. See, it's tough. See, I want, I want to I want to pick my lines because, you know, I want to. But I also don't want to jinx nothing, you know. We're feeling good. We want to know with Bevel. I'm feeling good here. But I, I got to take our lines. But like I yep. said, we got to score over 30. I think this could be – this could be like a, a old-fashioned shootout, yep. you know, like – I've kind of missed that a little bit. Maybe we'll get like a 37, 34 type of game. Maybe something big like that. Yeah. And I, I actually, I was just talking on, I did the podcast today and I said, 30 is the number, you know, the lions, yeah. they, they, they got to keep teams under 30. Their offense has to score over. I'm going to pick the Packers. So I can't give you 30, but I'm going to say it's like 34 to 29. I do think the, the lions are going to be right nipping at our heels, but I, I just, you know, I'm going to give us the edge in this one. I'll, I'll take that. That's I'll probably one that. of those scores that nobody's ever got to. It's such a ridiculous number, but I just, <laughs> I didn't want to give you exactly 30. So you're getting 29. Right, right. right. <laughs>
All right, man. Well, point. I, I appreciate you coming on, man. It's a lot of fun, and I, I look forward to doing this more. And make sure you check out Fan to Fan Network uh, if you haven't done that yet. We're we're the one of the things that I really love about the network, even though it's young and we're still trying to figure stuff out, is how hard everybody works. You you follow these. I followed everybody's YouTube. Ch- I can't keep up, man. Everybody's uh, posting daily stuff. You just popped up a video before I even got on here. It's, I I'm did. sweating just trying to keep up with everybody here. But real hardworking guys. They know their stuff, and it's been a lot of fun. And in 2021, it's going to be coming hard and fast. So make sure you check that out. Dose, thanks a lot for coming on, man. Thank you, man. Hopefully it's entertaining Sunday. That's all, all you right. could ask for. For sure, man. <laughs>